Given a charge distribution, you can compute electric fields. This can be a very cumbersome computation though. However, in some cases, the divergence theorem can help us out. How? That's what you will learn in this video. So, what are we going to do first? We can uh, we will see that we can relatively easily compute the uh, electric flux phi, which is the uh, integral uh, across the surface of some electric, electric field E. Well, why? How can we do that? Uh, well, we know Maxwell's equation, which states that the divergence of the electric field equals charge density divided by epsilon zero. And we know the divergence theorem, which say, states that the flux equals the uh, integral across uh, uh, the total solid V of the divergence of E. When we substitute this divergence of E equals rho over epsilon zero uh, on the right hand side, the epsilon zero is a constant, so you can put it in front. So your flux phi equals 1 over epsilon 0 times this integral over here, which is exactly the total charge in your solid. Now, how can you use this? Well, suppose you have some spherically symmetrical charge distribution. Doesn't matter how exactly it looks like, as long as yes, you have the symmetry. And the question is to compute the electric field. Now you have a a uh, spherically symmetric distribution, so your um, field can only depend uh, from R because if you would rotate, uh, you see the same, so the electric field cannot depend on phi or theta. And furthermore, for the same reason, uh, the electric field has to be in the R hat direction only. Now, what are we going to do? We are going to uh, use some uh, sphere with the radius capital R, some bigger sphere which encloses all charge inside. And now we're going to compute the electric flux phi through this sphere with radius capital R. So what's that? Well, this integral over here. Uh, we can uh, rewrite this integral because we know the shape of the electric field. So we get the uh, electric field as a function of capital R in the R head direction and we are integrating with respect to a sphere, so the uh, ds will be r hat times ds, so we'll get a factor of 1 here. Now, uh, we have uh, integrals only here uh, along the angles, so the capital R is constant, which means that you can take the electric field in front, so what you get is your, cap your uh, e of r, the uh, um, magnitude of your electric field, and here just integral of 1. Uh, how, uh, however, this uh, integral gives you just a, a surface area of your sphere, so that's 4 pi r squared. So, uh, what do you have? Your e times integral of 1 equals e r times 4 pi r squared. And this phi, for that we had the divergence theorem, this phi was q enclosed over epsilon 0. So, this term here equals Q enclosed over epsilon zero. So now you can compute the magnitude of your electric field. That's Q enclosed over 4 pi r squared. Oh, the epsilon zero is missing here. And then you know your total electric field. Uh, and that's just uh, 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 the same, but then in the r hat direction. Now you can do this for any capital R. So in general, your electric field as function of R as long as you are, uh, 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 are enclosing all your charge, uh, looks like this. And you'll see that's actually exactly the same as if you would put all your charge just in the origin. So a spherically symmetric charge distribution yields the same electric field as uh, a charge distribution where all charge is in the origin.